Hey everyone, welcome to this video and to my channel. My name is Mallory and I am a mom to a newborn baby boy, although I don't know if you could call him newborn, he's almost three months. Um, I'm also a military wife and a registered nurse. I had an emergency C-section and definitely learned a few things along the way. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my tips on how to make your C-section recovery a little bit smoother and a little bit easier. So before we get into the video, make sure to hit the red subscribe button down below and turn on notifications so that you get a little notification in your YouTube app on when I post a new video. All right, so let's get started. So as I mentioned, I did have an emergency C-section, so it was unexpected. I was not really prepared for it. So if you do know that you are having a planned C-section, then you can be ahead of the game and can gather all this stuff up. If you end up with a C-section, like if you're planning a vaginal delivery, but then end up with a C-section, these are things that you can easily incorporate. So the first thing that I recommend having is a belly binder. And this is not something that I was really aware of before. And my hospital actually gave it to me. So it's basically this big, long, thing that's this, it's stretchy so it can stretch across your belly and when did they give this to me I think they gave this to me either later I had my c-section like at two in the morning and then it was either later that day or the next day that they gave me this and this makes all the difference so basically there's this huge thing of like velcro and you just go like that and put it around your belly and it helps keep everything in place. It really helps, I, in my opinion, it helped with pain. So like in the hospital, I would wear it even in bed, but especially if I got up, go to the bathroom or walk around the room, it just helps keep everything in place. It helps with pain because it's supporting your abdominal muscles. If your hospital doesn't give you one, they should if you have a C-section, but if they don't, definitely go to Amazon. I'll try to find one on Amazon and link it below. And also everything that I talk about on here, if I can, I will link it in the description box below. Okay, another thing that is super helpful if you have, especially if you have a C-section, it's helpful whether or not you do, and it's helpful, helpful if you are breastfeeding, but especially if you have a C-section, I would recommend a bedside bassinet and the one we have is the halo bassinet so i'll throw up a little video of it here and this one is really great because you can bring it right up to your bed it can even hover over your bed now ours can't because we have a platform bed so the legs can't go underneath our bed but if you don't have a platform bed then the legs go underneath your bed and you can actually have the little bassinet hover over your bed so that you can just lean, you can sit up, lean over, and the side goes down so that you can lean over the bassinet and pick your baby up. And that way you're not putting much strain on your incision, which is very low in your abdomen. You really wanna take care to not strain it. So having a bedside bassinet, especially the halo bassinet, is a really, really good idea. Another thing that I found super helpful was having a nursing pillow. And I personally use the Boppy nursing pillow. I still use it. Yeah, the Boppy pillow or the My Breast Friend, something like that. Um, those types of pillows are really helpful because one, you're not trying to arrange a bunch of different pillows. It, so it just makes it easier. And two, again, you are not straining your abdomen. Speaking of pillows, you will want extra pillows for propping yourself up in bed. I found that I was not able to lie down flat or on my side for at least two weeks, maybe close to three. It was probably three or four, at three or four weeks postpartum that I was finally able to lie down flat or on my side. Because when you're, if you're lying down flat, it just feels like your whole stomach is pressing on your incision. I mean, everything is about the incision. And it's such, it really is quite a large cut. I definitely had to sleep propped up, not sitting straight up, but at least at some kind of angle so that all the pressure was not on my stomach. 
Another thing that you'll want to have, both for breastfeeding and just to save yourself from getting up and down a lot, is a nice large water bottle. This one is the Hydro Flask, and you can see it's quite beat up. I bought it while we were in Germany and used it throughout my pregnancy and now postpartum. I really like this because it is insulated and so you can put ice. I personally drink water better when it's really cold and icy. So I like to put ice in here and it keeps it cool for a long time. This is an additional cap that I bought on Amazon and it's a straw cap. So there's a straw that goes inside the bottle. But anyway, if you have a nice large water bottle, you're not gonna be getting up a lot because you wanna stay sitting down. I mean, you wanna get up and walk because you have to in order to facilitate healing, but you don't wanna be up a ton and you always, whenever you're breastfeeding, you always wanna make sure that you have water handy. Okay, now when you have a C-section, you still will bleed. Um, I don't know if it's as much as if you have a vaginal birth, but you definitely will need maternity pads. And so my hospital gave me a ton. I still, as you can see, I still have leftovers. So this is one of the maternity pads. I mean, it's like a diaper, you guys. <laughs> but um, you could also have your own, like I got slightly smaller ones for when I didn't need the huge, huge ones anymore. And also you'll want the mesh panties. I did save one pair of mesh panties <laughs> for videos like this. Um, and they're so comfy, you guys, because again, you don't want anything that is going to be chafing against your incision. So in addition to the mesh, mesh panties, like once you run out of those, then having some really large panties that again, won't chafe are, really, I, I think, totally necessary. Okay, now these two things will probably be prescribed by your doctor upon discharge, but you will want some kind of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory or NSAID and a stool softener. Now, of course, check with your doctor that med any medication you take is safe for breastfeeding, but um, I was prescribed, personally, I was prescribed naproxen and then a stool softener. Okay, now if you were like me and you were planning a vaginal birth, you probably had things like perineal balm and perineal spray. And I was kind of bummed because I actually made my own perineal spray um, out of essent with essential oils in there. And I was kind of bummed because I was like, well, I made this and I also made padsicles. And I was like, I, I don't need these <laughs> because I didn't give birth vaginally. But then after my two week appointment, so most likely you'll have a two week appointment where your doctor checks your incision to make sure it's healing properly and will take off the bandage, steri strips, whatever. Um, then after that, I actually got the idea to start spraying my incision with the perineal spray because it has, you know, those soothing properties in there from from the essential oils and whatever else is in there. Maybe you bought like the Earth Mama perineal spray. I've heard that's good. And so I would spray this on twice a day, like when I got dressed and then after I showered. Okay, another thing that will make your life easier post C-section is having a diaper caddy in every room where you anticipate changing baby's diaper. So especially if you have a two-story home, as we do, you do not want to be running up and down the stairs multiple times a day. Only go up the stairs when you absolutely need to. So I really kept it to a minimum, maybe a couple times a day I would come up and down the stairs. So our nursery is upstairs with the changing table, and so I needed to have multiple caddy stations. So I had one in our bedroom, like on the bed, so I can change Max in bed. And then I had a diaper caddy in the living room. So you could either have one that you carry, like you carry down with you at the beginning of the day, but I just ended up making two caddies so that I didn't have to be like, oh, I forgot to bring the caddy down. You'll also want really comfortable clothing. You probably will be wearing maternity clothes for another several weeks or several months, just depending on how long it takes you to heal and your stomach to go down. But I just live, I still live in like stretchy pants, stretchy shirts, I mean, you just don't, again, you don't want anything that rubs on your incision. Something that would have been super helpful and that I did not have, but I wish I did, was one of those grabber thingies. So it's like a long stick with a grabber on the end, like for short people to grab stuff <laughs> up a pie, but I wanted one for grabbing things that I dropped on the floor. So there's this one instance in the hospital. 
I was all by myself and I was fine. Like I didn't need any help to go to the bathroom or, you know, I, I went into the bathroom to just kind of freshen up, wash my face, brush my hair, all that. And as I was like fumbling with my hair tie, I dropped it on the floor and I'm like, I, I can't, I, I can't bend over <laughs> because again, that incision is like where you bend over. And I really wished that I had had one of those grabber thingies. Thankfully I had more hair ties in my bathroom kit. I'm recording, go away. <laughs> yeah, one of those grabber thingies would have been really helpful for those times when somebody wasn't immediately there. Cause like, I wasn't gonna call the nurse and be like, hey, I need my hair tie. <laughs> so anyway get yourself one of those grabber things because I it will come in handy. Okay, and the last thing that makes a C-section so much easier or the recovery after a C-section so much easier is having help. So it was me and my husband, of course, but then my parents came and visited us and they stayed with us for a whole month. They left the day after Max turned one month old and that was the greatest gift that we could have ever received. And just to have them here to like, to visit us in the hospital, to bring things to the hospital, to help us. We were actually moving into this house when I was like in labor basically. So if you missed my birth story, go check it out because it is totally epic. A crazy military family story with going into labor and moving into a house all at the same time husband starting school. So there's no way that we could have like done all this stuff on our own. So they helped us set up our house. They helped us unpack, set things up. They helped out with Max, you know, like, hey, I really need to get a shower. Like, can you hold him? And Matt, Mark is like busy doing homework or whatever. They cooked meals, they cleaned up, they took me grocery shopping when Mark was in school and I didn't have a car. I know that not everybody has we, I mean, we don't have family nearby. They came to visit, but I know that not everybody will have family that can like live with them <laughs> in their first month of postpartum. And especially like if you're watching this as I'm putting it out, we all know what's going on in like March and April of 2020, um, this pandemic that's happening and you may not be able to have family visit and they definitely can't come to visit in the hospital. So, you know, you could always still have a meal train put together, like people in your neighborhood, they could just drop meals off to you. That is a huge, huge help. If you're not even able to arrange a meal train, I would suggest signing up for something like Freshly, which we have been using for over a month now. It's amazing. They deliver you healthy pre-cooked meals to your doorstep. They're chilled, they're fresh, and all you have to do is heat them up in the microwave and you have a complete meal. It's amazing. So something like that. Um, and if you're interested in a coupon code, just let me know and I can email it to you. Or there's meal kit delivery services like Martha and Marley Spoon, HelloFresh, something chef, green chef, I don't know. But there's those things so that you get stuff delivered and you just quickly cook it within their 30 minutes. There's stuff like Instacart where they deliver groceries to your house. So in this modern day, there's so many options other than having like people in your home to help you. There's so many things that can help you out externally with deliveries and such. Take advantage of the help. You don't wanna do this alone. Whatever kind of birth you have, but especially if you have a C-section, it's a million times harder if you don't have help. I mean, I don't know what, what we would have done. I mean, the house would still probably be in disarray if my parents weren't here to help us. And recovery would have been a lot more difficult because I probably would have been pushing myself more than I should have if I didn't have like four extra pairs of hands to help us out. So definitely get yourself some help. Okay, you guys, so those are my tips for a smooth C-section recovery. And I hope these tips help you out with your postpartum recovery from a C-section. Leave me your C-section recovery tips in the comments below because it might help, help out another mom. If I end up having another C-section in the future, which I really, really am going for a VBAC next time, but if that doesn't work out and I need another C-section, that I definitely would love your tips, anything that I didn't think of or I forgot, please leave them in the comments below. All right, remember to like and subscribe to this channel. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.